Two seasons ago, Jadon Sancho left these shores for £8 million. Pounds. There's talk of him returning, or possibly to France with PSG, for £100 million. Pounds. Um, first of all, Liam, can you understand why he's being talked about in that bracket? Because we're talking, mm. well, world superstar level. Yeah, I can. I can. I think he's been spoken about for years. This isn't a surprise to a lot of people within the game. I think he's just starting to show his true potential and ability is yet to come. And that's why he's talking about him being in that £100 million bracket. This is a player who was frustrated at Manchester City and wanted to play. And we spoke about Ademola Lookman. I see Reese Nelson go from Arsenal and do really, really well at Hoffenheim. You're now seeing young English players not get their opportunity and niche yours and go abroad, learn a new culture. And Jadon Sancho, for me, is, the, is the, the flag bearer of that. He's absolutely outstanding at Dortmund. He's come and played for England's national team, and it's like he just goes out and plays and enjoys himself. But if I'm a football club in the Premier League right now and I see the likes of Lookman, I see the likes of Reese Nelson, I see the likes of Jadon Sancho, I'm looking at, right, OK, what are we doing to get our young players in here? Because if you get your young players in your first team, look at Dele Alli. What did he sign for Tottenham? For something like £6 million. Pounds. What's his transfer value now? Tottenham have done it for a, for a long, consistent period of time. I don't think enough Premier League clubs. Declan Rice, possibly at West Ham's come through. Now you're talking about him getting a big move to, to Manchester City. I think clubs need to look at the way they're bringing their young players through and say, if we get two or three in, we could have players being sold for £50, £60 million pounds now because of the way the market's gone. So I'm hoping that we can keep our young players on this shore instead of flood low, go out to, to Germany, France, Spain, because we want this league to be the the best league in the world with the best young English players in it. But it just seems to me an incredible increase in value, Ryan. As he... First of all, does it look like bad business? I know he was coming towards the end of his contract at Manchester City, so it wouldn't necessarily have been completely reflective of his true value. But to go from £8 million to one hundred in such a short space of time, has he improved that much as a player? Well, if you look at it from the point of view he got signed for £8 million without playing a senior football game, so... Yeah. For me, that shows uh, the potential and ability that, that the kid has. All, all he's just been now is, is he's been exposed. He's had the exposure mm -hmm. at a top club to go and showcase his ability. So when you, when you look at it from that point, point of view, then you could argue it, it wouldn't be bad business if a club were to sign him for that, that kind of money, he, his career to, to carry on taking the route that it's going and fulfil his potential. He's mm. so young. You, you, could, you could get a eight to ten years out of a... Of, possible world-class player. Mm. You certainly wouldn't judge him on tonight's performance, would you, either? That, 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 that wasn't would, really the occasion would, to showcase his... I would say that he's that good. Tottenham changed their shape and went to a back five. When you play with a back five with a winger that likes to stay wide, the wing-back can go and get as tight as he wants. When you play with a four and you're narrow, Jadon Sancho running at you with a, with a run on you, being able to take you on to a completely different prospect. I think he's that good that teams now adapt in the way they play to be able to deal with him. So, yes, he didn't have a great game today, but if you watch the game from a tactical point of view, the fact that Aurier was able to be so close to him from playing with a back five, that's down to quality of a young English 18-year-old in the Champions League. I think that's so exciting for us. He's still a kid as well. It, it, He's it, still a kid, and I think the, the longer you play, the more games you play, that, that consistency, that comes over time. But the, some of the performances put in this season in, in, in a top league in Europe for, yeah. for a top club where... There's pressure. There, there's a lot of pressure on him. Mm, and people club. are expecting that. I mean, tonight you, you, you're looking at an 18 year old to, to produce something. For, mm. for me, that just goes to show the, the level of ability that this kid has. Well, in fact, that's one of the first weeks we've had. How good do you think he could become? Listen, it, he's in control of his own destiny. Mm. I mean, he has to, if he's going to move elsewhere, then he needs to pick his move wisely because. The most important thing for him is game time. Mm. The reason that people are talking about him now is the fact that he's had the exposure to play every week. So for him to move some way, he needs to guarantee that he's going to play and then he needs to keep his head, he needs to stay dedicated, enjoy his football like, like he obviously is at the moment. You can tell he's, he's love, loved being out there. And, and like I say, it's just one of those where it's exciting to see because he's English and mm. um, he's young. And I know uh, Liam said about not wanting our English players to go abroad. I think from a national team point mm. of view, it's great that he's gone yeah. out there and got the experience of a, a complete different culture, a different style of football. So that kind of thing can only benefit our national side. That's a great point. As, as, as far as we understand, it's uh, between PSG and possibly Manchester United. Do you think he should make, if it is those two clubs, do you think he should make his choice exactly on the basis of what Ryan just said? Yeah. 
how much he'll play. Well, we had this conversation about Hudson Odoi at Chelsea and whether he should go to Bayern Munich, and we were saying it comes down to fo football, 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 because at that age, all you want to do is play, show your ability. Look at Mbappe. He goes, plays, plays week in, week out in Monaco, shows his class, goes to PSG, shows his class, best, wins a World Cup. You want to play football, you want to be exposed at the top level, so whichever's best for Jade and Sancho is which club plays him the most. And, that's the thing about young players. Uh, I get asked now, it's under 23s, I bet you're the same at Tottenham about young players at under 18 level. Uh, you, and people say to you, is the player good enough to play in the first team? The honest answer is you don't know until you expose them. And for me, that's why I love the likes of Pochettino, Klopp, what he's done with Trent Alexander-Arnold and Robertson. He exposes young players early. He tr gives them the trust and belief. And that's what they need, because young players need trust and belief from their manager to go and perform. And I think if more of our managers on, this sh on these shores did it, we'd see more and more young players coming through and, and increasing the quality of our national team. So if you're Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, do you march into Ed Woodward's office? As well as say, give me the job. But you say, right, OK, Sancho's out, Sancho in. So, I mean, that's a, that's a difficult one. I, I think if, if, <laughs> I thought I'd give you the easy one. Yeah, yeah so easy, I mean, yeah. if you're a Manchester United fan looking at it, I think you would like that, because mm. since Sanchez has, has made his move to Manchester United, it's not worked out for, for whatever reason, I don't know, but you've got a young kid that, that would fit the bill at Manchester United, the way he plays, the, the way he attacks, and, and, and the way he... The way he's free on the football pitch, and, and not only that, he's been at Manchester City as well. So I think, from a psychological point of view, to, to get that, it, it would be a massive coup for the club. I mean, to go into the new season, mm. to kind of lay down that marker that, that we're ready to challenge again. Yeah, yeah, it could be, it could be spectacular. By the way, um, as, we, as we know, no team has ever overturned a, a 2 0 home deficit in the Champions League. Away to PSG, all sorts of players out, no mm. Pogba either. Yeah. Could it still happen? No pressure. That's what Oli Solskjaer, the way that he's managed, will be saying is, it is possible. I think it's a tall order. Not, not because of the quality of Manchester United, but the quality of the, that PSG G team. They're in a different class to, to Manchester United at, at Old Trafford. And I think if you're looking at the likes of Tottenham, Liverpool, Manchester City, I think whoever goes through PSG has got a very, very good chance of, of winning the Champions League. Well, talk about teams turning things around. Um, Real Madrid must have been reasonably comfortable going into the game, but they crashed out tonight, losing 4-1 at home to Ajax. I mean, how shocked were you at that result, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, incredible, to be perfectly honest. I, I watched the first leg yeah. and I thought Ajax were good. They, they had moments in the game. I thought that was quite unfortunate to actually lose the game, but I don't think anyone see that result come in 4-1 um, and a convincing 4-1 as well. Yet again... Gareth Bale didn't start. There are various reports of unrest between him and teammates, between the supporters, mm. and he, he doesn't seem to be feeling or certainly receiving the love at all. Bear in mind what he's done in his time there. Does that surprise you? Yeah, could I, I think it could only happen at Real Madrid. I think you could win four Champions League titles, is it? And, yep. and not be... And won the Liga. And, and win the La Liga and score an overhead kick in the Champions League final to win the game. Scored over 100 and, goals for the football club it, as well. He, incredible footballer. Incredible footballer. And I think it could only happen at Real Madrid. And, and now we're going for a really difficult time, losing to Barcelona on the weekend, being knocked out of the Champions League by a young, exciting Ajax team. Like the first game, they were outstanding. Second game game today some of the goals were incredible we were watching it upstairs um but yeah I feel for Gareth because he's getting coming up to 30 I think he's come up to 30 now so the next move for him is going to be key I think his physical attributes will still up, take him up to so you look at Ronaldo he's still going strong 33 34 Gareth's got similar physical characteristics it's going to be really interesting what the next move is and and who who goes with him because I think you're going to get four or five years of real top world-class football still from him we know it's a very political club and it has a very strong dressing room, certain newspapers and outlets are very close to the club as well. When Gareth Bale's agent comes out and says Madrid fans should be kissing his feet and they should be ashamed of themselves, is that going to help the situation? Um, probably not for, from the fan point of view, but like Liam said, Real Madrid are in a really difficult moment um, and I'm sure from Gareth's point of view, he's probably sitting there, I mean, he doesn't want to leave that football club, it's, 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 it's the biggest club in the world, so... There's going to be a new manager and you don't know, the new manager might come in and, and say, Gareth, you're going to be my main man and I'm going to base the whole team around you. So I think he's probably going to sit tight and, and, and see what happens in the summer. But I'm sure if Gareth Bale come available, that there will be plenty of top, top European clubs that, that would love to sign him because he's an incredible footballer. I mean, his statistics since he's moved to Real Madrid has been incredible. He's, he's a serial winner now mm -hmm. and, and that experience... It, 
you, you can't buy that. I mean, he's, he's, just, he's a player that I'm sure every single football club would want to have him. Were you surprised at those comments from the agent? If, it, if I mean, he was apparently he was booed off even, mm. you know, it started when I, I believe he scored the winning penalty and didn't celebrate with his teammates. So, mm. I mean, we analyse everything in depth here in this country. <laughs> yeah. They Fun really jobs. do there. Yeah. But um, to be telling the Madrid fans what they should be doing, I, I cannot see how that is anything other I think that only, than inflammatory. I think it only ends in one way, when you start bringing the Real Madrid fans into it and it ends with the player leaving the club. Now, for me, I think maybe they've got to a point where they feel the agent feels like he's doing the best for Gareth in terms of Gareth maybe having to move away from what is if the, the biggest club in the world. If you're not happy somewhere, you're not going to play your best football. And I think... the. The, the performance that Gareth Bale's put in, once he's been put in and had a run of games, he's been absolutely outstanding for that club. But I think there's so much, so much politics there in terms of who should be selected. I think Isco's a fantastic player. He's having massive problems at that club at the moment. I think there are other things at hand. Lopetegui came in, went after two, three months. Now they've got Solari and there's no stability at that club. And even at a great club like Real Madrid with the great players they've got, you still need an element of stability for it to work. And, and it's just not there at the moment. And when you come up to 30 and you're thinking, I I want to really achieve something for the rest of my career, that's when you have to make a decision about is Real Madrid going to be the club where I can do that. So you could read it the other way, those antagonistic remarks could be designed to get him a move away. I, I, I'd like to think that the standard player that Gareth Bale is, he has an agent that is smart enough to make the right comments at the right time. And for me, if Gareth's not happy, then an easier way out of that is for your agent to make inflammatory remarks and make it really untenable for you to be there. Who, if he were coming back to this country, um, who would he suit best? I think on, on, on current form and style of play, you'd, you'd probably say Manchester United. I mean, you could argue Tottenham as well, but I feel like Tottenham are so set in their ways, it, it would be difficult for him to mm. come back because he's been at the football club and the transition the club have made is, is, is massive. So it would be a totally different football club, whereas... Would it be hard for him not to think it was a step backwards for him? And that's not denigrating what Tottenham have become, but he moved from there to Madrid. Would oh, that be a difficult move all round? I, I don't think so. I mean, he's, he's won four Champions Leagues. He, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, I mean, so from his point of view, anywhere from Real Madrid is, is a step down. So he, I'm sure he's at the stage in his career where he wants to be enjoying his football. And if that is leaving Real Madrid, then, like I say, I'm sure there's loads of clubs in Europe that would want him. I know that Manchester United did want him for a, for, a, for a number of years, but I'm just not sure whether Gareth Bale would, would want that. I mean, he's, he's approaching 30, and, and like Liam said, he's had a lot of games in his legs, so I don't know whether he would want to go down the route of a European league where it's a bit more relaxed and he might be able to string an extra two or three years out of his career rather than the Premier League that is so physically demanding that his body would probably only ca be capable of doing that for another two years. Yeah, I th I th he's, he started his career young, but what I think is he's not played a huge amount of games over the last two years, and I think he'll want to go somewhere where he can win things. I think he's just got a winner's mentality. You see what he did with Wales. He nearly took them single-handedly to, to, to European final. I think he's still got so much time. I look at Ronaldo... So, I look what's, at so the... what's the challenge, then, when you reel off everything that he's won? What would be the next challenge for him? For him, I think... I think is, would it be to, as a club that... Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's OK. Um, would it be to do a club that hasn't achieved great things? Or yeah. join a club? I think Manchester United and Tottenham stick out to me because they both are clubs that are trying to get back to that top level. I think Manchester City are now recruiting in a different way where they're, they're trying to, they always recruit young, try to develop. Um, Liverpool, possibly Liverpool, they play with pace and, and, and ability. He could play anywhere, but I, I think he'd like to go somewhere and really push them. I could, and I think for Tottenham, it'd be a huge statement signing. That's like the biggest statement that you can make. We're talking about players that can actually improve their front line, improve them in wide positions and give them something different. Well, Gareth Bale definitely does that and he's got a great connection with the fans. Why not make him that marquee signing that takes you into that new stadium? It might make more sense than it actually looks like. If he were to live Real Madrid, what should be uppermost in his mind in making the decision? I think every, every player's different. I think every player's different, but looking at Gareth, the type of player that he is, the type of mentality that he has, He'll look at where can I go and affect a team and win things. Financially, he's absolutely fine. So uh, for me, he wants to go and make the rest of his career as successful as possible. I think that would be the only thing on his mind. I, I also struggle as well with the concept of why there is a disconnect between him and the fans at Real Madrid and possibly some of his teammates. I can understand from the player point of view because I've seen some of the comments that 
the lifestyle of, of a Spanish person is completely different to, to us British. I mean, Gareth, when he was at Tottenham, he, he was so dedicated. He, he had a routine. He was in bed at 10, half 10 at night, whereas the Spanish go out and eat at half 10 at night. And mm. I'm sure from Gareth's point of view, him, him going, staying at home and not joining his teammates, he's just thinking of his physical condition and how I can turn up for training in the best possible way tomorrow. I mean, he's not going to change his whole lifestyle to, to suit other people. And I see, I see a comment from Thibaut Courtois and I just thought it was completely wrong. I just thought it was completely wrong because every player is an individual. And Gareth Bow, if he wants to stay at home and, and, and be dedicated and, and have a different approach to things, then you shouldn't come out and say something bad about your teammate. I, I don't agree with that. Well, there's two things to that. First of all, that dedication and that routine, that discipline, that's what has brought Gareth Bale a success and the career he's had so far. So why should he change that? But you can also say, well, if you're going to another country to integrate, you need to adapt and you need to go with the ways of that country. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem for, for Gareth is he speaks English. I mean, I've been, I've been on loan, I went on loan to France and um, everyone speaks English. So... For, for you to learn that language, it's difficult because everyone communicates with you in the English language. So I can understand why he hasn't actually learnt the language. And in terms of his lifestyle, Gareth's always been... He's always been a bit separate from, from the team. I mean, when he was at Tottenham, he was quite similar. He'd come in, done his work, mm. he got on with everyone. Mm. But once he was away from the football club, that was it. That was his time to mm. spend with his family, play golf, whatever, whatever it was, mm. was. That was his life and the way he wanted to do things. There's nothing wrong with that. I've been, I've been with some players who, who like to, to spend time with people they've been with all day at football and go around the house. I weren't one of those players. Once I left the training ground, that was my time to go and spend with my family, my friends, and get away from football. I, I just think that everyone's completely different. And mm. for one player to come out and criticise another in public, his teammate, I just... Poor. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't think it's right and... It's, it's, it's just, it's not, just not... I think it's just, it sums up everything that's happening in Madrid at the moment. It sums up everything that's happening in Madrid. I think if there's one football club where winning's not enough, it's that football club. You need to be a good... That whole culture of being a Galactica. Back from when I was a child, Roberto Carlos, mm. Sedan coming in, Beckham, it would been, It wasn't about how good a player it was. It wasn't even about if you won. It was you had to win in a certain style, you had to project a certain image. And for me, Gareth doesn't project a Ronaldo, I'm a superstar image. For me, Gareth projects an image of I'm a fantastic professional who is dedicated to being the best footballer I can be. Mm. Now, it's a shame for me that at Real Madrid that doesn't seem to yeah. be enough. What's he do now? Just keep his head down, keep doing what he's doing and see what yeah. happens? Yeah, and he's done... I think the way he's conducted himself for the, for the quality of player that he is and the way he's been treated, the amount of times he's been dropped and brought on, I thought what he did in Champions League... He, for me, he won that Champions League final for Madrid when he came on against Liverpool. Didn't get the credit he deserves. Goes back, gets dropped, comes back on. For the, play, the quality of player that he is and the low-maintenance professional that he is, he should be seen as an absolute positive. And I think whoever gets him next will see a... a, a unbelievable turn of form because he's not played the 50, 60 games a season the likes of Ronaldo has done for the last, Messi has done for the last eight, nine years. I think he's still got a lot of the energy in the tank. I think whoever signs him next is going to be very, very fortunate. I mean, you talked about Gareth at Tottenham. Yes. But have you ever played with anybody where it affected your thoughts on them as a player because they had a different social agenda to you? Yes, I'll be honest, yes, but not in the way that Gareth lives his life. Oh, you mean um, the other way? Yes, I mean, if, if players are going out drinking, coming into training, hungover, unprepared, I didn't like that. That, mm. that annoyed me because I just thought, you're in a position where you should be trying to get the most out of your, your body and it's almost disrespectful to your teammates because I remember times I'd be training and going up against someone who slept two or three hours a night before and that annoyed me. I didn't like that, but for someone who who lives their life in a way to get the best out of themselves, I, I would never, ever in a million years criticise someone for that because that's the example you want to set. And, and Gareth Bale at this moment in time, for, for any young kid and looking up to, to their hero or, or, or professional footballers, that's the example you want to set. I mean, what an example. He's getting criticised, he's getting booed by his own fans and his own teammates are criticising him, yet... He's not saying anything, he's not coming out, he's not sulking, he's doing his job, he's, he's turning up and still trying to do his best, so and, and, you have and, to credit and, him. And also speaks reasonable Spanish, we're told, as well. So he has made the effort 
to, I mean, he, he must be scratching his head saying, what have I done wrong here? He hasn't and done he, anything wrong. And he will know there'll be other players in that Madrid team who have done that, who have not been on time, maybe yeah. haven't been stretched as they should have done. Yeah, but it's not just him. Isco's a top, top class, a well, world class midfield player. If I'm any club in the Premier League, I'm trying to sign Isco as well. Mm. That Sometimes it's not the player. Sometimes it's the culture of a football club, the environment that they're in. They're not given the tools to succeed. When you're Gareth Bale or Isco, whoever, those two players, for me, are in the world-class bracket. Isco is a top, top footballer. He's, I think he's only played 13, 16 games this season. He should be playing every, every week for, at a top four club in any, any league in the world. So it's not just Gareth Bale, and that's why it's not his fault. It's just a, he's a product of what's happening around him right now. Do you suspect it's not just the manager not selecting it? It's not the manager. That club's never been run by the manager, ever. It was Zinedine Zidane did a fantastic job coaching and managing the team. He wins three Champions Leagues in a row and says, you know, I've had enough of this. That should tell you how difficult it is to manage a football club like Real Madrid, where other f it's, they have to do more than win there. It's not just about winning football matches there. It's about image, it's about status, about all the things that, for me, don't encapsulate team football and why Barcelona at the moment, are, I think they're 12, 13 points further ahead than them in, in the league.